start with the circuit first. So what we are going to do is we are going to have a wind bridge oscillator using open. And you know, whenever we are talking about an oscillator, till now we have understood one thing very clear that uh, oscillator will basically have a feedback circuit. Bridge. So the feedback circuit will basically be having a wind bridge. Okay. So wind bridge kind of structure. And that is what we are going to do. So it's basically also called a harmonic oscillator. And if you just uh, be clear with the term, harmonic oscillator means uh, that the output that we usually have is either sinusoidal wave. Okay. So in a wind bridge oscillator, output is a sinusoidal wave. Okay. And uh, if it's a sinusoidal wave, uh, the audio, the frequency range that we are going to have it will be the audio frequency range. So it is something which is similar and we are just going on with this particular logic here. Okay, so let me just draw the wind bridge uh, circuit. Okay, uh, with the later circuit. So you know, wind bridge you basically you'll be having that uh, diamond kind of bridge. Okay, that you might have already studied. So I'm just going to draw two circuits here. Okay, and let me just start with the first one. So we'll be basically having a resistor here, let's say, okay. And a part of this will be actually going into the terminal of the open, okay. The terminal of the open will actually have a part of it. So I'll put this uh, one part of it to the inverting terminal, okay. And the other part, this part will basically be the open. So when you draw it, uh, preferably you can just draw the open, okay? And then probably you can just uh, go on with the different parts of it, okay? And uh, then if you're having a wind bridge, uh, basically you'll be forming the damage structure. You're basically having resistors, okay? And uh, we can also have some capacitors connected, okay? That is also true. Okay, we'll have a capacitor here. We can just make it short here. I will just do a resistor and a capacitor here okay? because a wind bridge circuit, what we have, will also have an RC circuit. Okay? And then what we have is a capacitor and a resistor which are connected in parallel. Okay? So we will have a resistor and a capacitor which will be actually connected in parallel. So this is the parallel part. Here I will have a capacitor connected. Okay? I suggest all of you, as always, to practice in the case, okay? And uh, on the fourth uh, arm, we'll be just having a resistor. Okay? So that's pretty much it, okay? That's the only thing that we need to do. But when we analyze the circuit, we draw it in a different way, okay? And then this end uh, will basically connect it to this. So I will be drawing two circuits for this. We'll be doing the analysis of the second circuit, okay? So, if I just uh, draw this, okay, this will be the corrections here. This is minus, this is the non inverting terminal, okay. And let me just draw the resistors here. Okay? So this is one resistor. And all of them can have different values, okay. In fact, what is the condition of the connection between the resistors will decide if we are going to have a sustained oscillation or not, okay? The conditions, whatever we have studied for sustained oscillation, you will going to remain valid here. This is one more resistor that we have, okay? And uh, what we have here is a capacitor C1 and the resistor R1, okay? And then we have got a resistor R3, and here we have got the resistor R2, this is your capacitor C2, and then finally this is R4, okay? So this is your open, and this will be nothing but your V out. So this is one way of uh, representing this circuit, okay? Or we can actually take one more form of this circuit. Let's just draw both the forms, okay? And you can draw either of them because the analysis of the circuit will uh, will have only the RC circuit involved, okay? So, you know, whenever you are actually drawing a op-amp, okay? Maybe I'll start from the op-amp for the second part, okay? What we usually have is, uh, output okay and then this is actually basically we'll be having a part which will be feedback into the input okay 
this is also the same okay a part of it is fed back into the input via this register r3 and r4 okay so here also we are actually doing the same this you can say this is an equivalent circuit okay so we can call this as an equivalent so we take this inverting terminal okay and this inverting terminal will basically be having this and on this part we are actually going to have a capacitor and the field. What we're going to do is we're going to get two of the capacitor here. Okay. And uh, the resistor at this end, okay. And the connector. So you please note here we have got a capacitor and a resistor in series. We have got a capacitor and resistor connected in parallel. So we have got a capacitor here, okay. Both these arms with the same length. And uh, we have it in series, right? So what about the parallel one? The parallel one will essentially go here. This one here. So we will have one resistor here, and we will have one capacitor. Here. So you have to practice it, okay? I I hope all of you are drawing it. If you are not drawing this, probably you can just take a snapshot, which is okay for now. And what we are going to do uh, in, in this entire unit is, in, in this entire topic is, we are going to analyze the two RC circuits, okay? That is what is our main job is going to be. So let me just draw the resistors here, okay? This is one. This is the other one, okay? We have these resistors here, and then maybe we can just mark them, right? So this is R3, this is R4. Inverting terminal, non-inverting terminal. We have got R2 here, C2 is connected in parallel. This is R1, and uh, C1 is connected. So this is the equivalent resistor here. And we can have the output reference. Okay. So this is the circuit that you have to draw for your exam. And uh, this circuit uh, will basically, again, I think it's not a very complicated circuit. Okay. It will basically give you uh, two marks. And you don't need to draw both, let me tell you. You either draw this or draw this. Okay. But you know, for understanding purpose, I think this is more uh, important because uh, you have a feedback part for the open inverting terminal, okay? And then you have got the two RC circuits, one in series and one in parallel connected to the non-inverting terminal, okay? So what I prefer is to draw this circuit, okay? but in case during exam, you can't remember this. Even if you draw this, this will be acceptable, okay? So it's totally fine. So there are two RC circuits here, and what we are going to do in the next stage is we are going to draw two circuits, these two RC circuits, and we are going to analyze those RC circuits. Okay? What kind of information we actually can get it from there. So we have got two RC circuits okay, that we are going to actually check now. Okay? And uh, let me just uh, draw the two RC circuits that we have. Okay? You know, electronics in circuits or something which goes hand in hand. And I do a circuit. So I will have one RC circuit here, okay, which will be having a, a parallel resistor and capacitor. And then the other one will be series. Okay, so one is series, I've already drawn. Let me draw the parallel part now. So this is a parallel part. So that's my other C circuit. Okay, just to make it look good. Okay. So you know, in the last class, I did tell you that there is something which is called as a high pass filter and the low pass filter. What exactly do we mean by this? Okay, you might already know, but then it is we're going to revise it. So you will understand why we are calling it as the high pass filter and a low pass filter. By the word pass means it allows high frequency and low frequency. 
so i pass filter will actually allow high frequency to flow and the low pass filter will actually allow a low pass frequency to flow. so this is a low frequency to flow right so this is c2 this is r2 okay and then we have got the v output across one of the n so we'll take this okay so that the other part is the entire filter and this is the circuit which only have the r and the c part and this side we will actually have the input so now what we do is we are just going to analyze this particular circuit okay so for this so let me just divide this into two parts okay so you know this part okay is basically called as the high pass filter okay so i can write down this as high pass filter this is one part and uh, this particular part okay filter means you know it will allow only certain range of frequency to flow so i'll call this as low pass filter okay. so just to make a note of this i think uh, all of us know this that when we're talking about a capacitor the reactance of a capacitor is 1 divided by omega c okay? and if we take this uh, 1 divided by omega c here it means that if the frequency is more okay the reactance is going to be less okay so in general we understand this that if the frequency is more the reactance is less if the frequency is less the reactance is going to be less so if the frequency is very low this particular part if the frequency is low the reactance will be very high and reactance is something which opposes the flow of current so that signal cannot flow through this right so that's why when the signal is high or the frequency is high of the signal the reactance will be low and the signal can easily flow through this okay so that means only high frequency signal can flow across this particular part because this does not block the high frequency signal okay because the reactance lowers down that is why it is called a high pass filter on the other hand if you look into this and let's say i am earthing this part okay i am earthing this part what happens is if the frequency is low if the frequency is low here okay this will actually offer more reactance so the current will only flow across this the current will or the signal will actually take the low free uh, low resistance path so this is a high resistance path if the frequency is low so it will take this path and it will get a signal so that means you get a signal for a low frequency okay so for this particular case what happens is if the frequency is low you are going to get a signal so that is actually low pass filter but what about high frequency if the frequency is high the reactance will be low here the current will pass through this okay so you're basically not going to get any kind of signal on this end so that is the reason we call them as a high pass filter and a low pass filter so the meaning is quite simple okay high frequency low frequency and that's why it is a high pass filter and a low pass filter okay so maybe we can just uh, write down whatever i said okay so you know this is again important i just want to prefer telling you this before we high pass filter so what we have is uh, uh, this uh, low frequency okay uh, or at low frequency can say at low frequency c1 okay acts as open circuit so this c1 will actually act as open circuit and it won't definitely allow the um, frequency signal to pass through okay and you know the obvious reason one divided by omega c okay and when the frequency is high at high uh, frequency okay okay e1 provides very low impedance okay and that's it that's why we call it as a high frequency pass okay so this way we can say that hence x as a high pass So what happens is it will only allow high frequency component. So 
I mean, you know, this can be a very simple question, objective question I might ask. And you can write down the answer, okay? It's not very difficult, I guess. Remember this, but then you can actually draw the circuit, explain it better. I think this will always be easy. Okay. So when the uh, C two access open circuit, okay, so it will actually offer a very uh, high uh, reactance, okay, at low frequency. So just remember the formula one by omega c, and I think that's more than enough to explain this. Okay. Output voltage appears directly across R2, okay? Just remember this, okay? So at high frequency, uh, the output is short circuit, right? The ground level. Condition hence it acts as a Lucas. So please remember this point, okay? That's important. Okay. So uh, what what is the conclusion here? A very important conclusion would be that uh, if we're actually having a signal from the input to the output, okay? We basically having a signal from the input to the output what happens usually is it neither allows a low frequency nor a high frequency signal to pass through okay and i think that is quite obvious it does not allow a low frequency or a high frequency to pass through because this will actually block the low frequency this will block the high frequency so that means whatever frequency we get as an output will not be either low or high okay it will be having some selective value so this is actually an important conclusion that we need to understand before we actually analyze the circuit because this is actually a combination of both high and low. Okay? So hence this RC network is not okay allow low or high frequency. Okay, that's important. You need to have a frequency selection. So what happens usually is that if we are considering a one particular frequency at one particular frequency, okay, you basically have that one particular frequency at which you will be basically having a output uh, signal, okay, and output of the uh, circuit, okay, will be maximum. So you'll have some maximum value. So there is always this uh, compromise between the high frequency and the low frequency. And that is actually nothing by why we call it as a frequency selector. It will be maximum, okay, which is the resonant frequency. So we have to find out the resonant frequency, okay, and that is actually the aim of this particular unit. So this uh, resonant frequency we will be denoted as F to the base R, okay, and this denoted to the base R. And uh, this basically we can say uh, it will actually act as a notch to So what usually happens is you are actually interested in finding out the resonant frequency FR, okay? And uh, we will see that the signal will actually be maximum at a certain frequency, okay? that frequency is so if we do the analysis for the resonant frequency we are going to get the value here okay so let me just write down this condition okay the question condition we already know that uh, this a beta must be equal to one okay and phase angle of a beta is equal to zero okay so let's just remember this condition so you have to remember it every time so what happens is that at fr that means at resonant frequency okay this phase shift that we are talking about is going to be zero phase shift is equal to zero okay so that's the first thing that we know and uh, what happens is you will see that the v output divided by v input is equal to one divided by 
and what is v output divided by v input is nothing but So uh, also, okay, also we know that a beta must be equal to one. Okay, that is actually nothing but for sustained oscillation. Okay, so you know uh, I am teaching this for almost uh, more than a week now. Okay, this topic, and we have not yet uploaded the lecture. So please make sure that you remember whatever we have done in the last few classes. So for a beta is equal to uh, one for sustained oscillation. Therefore, the value of a in must be equal to three. Okay. So these are certain things that we should know. Okay. And apart from that, um, if we are considering certain conditions, let's say if R one is equal to R two. Okay. I can make the circuit according to my will, and I can say R one is equal to R two. Then we will see that the resonant frequency is equal to one by Two by R three, which actually sets the tone for the next class. I think we are going to derive this in the next class. Okay, and uh, C one is equal to C two. So if both these conditions are there fulfilled, then we actually get the resonant frequency as one by two times. Okay, and if they are not equal, okay, if uh, R one is not equal to R two and C one is not equal to C two, the resonant frequency that we are going to get is one. Divided by root over, okay. Uh, okay, get down to two pi four. Okay. So we will we will have a calculation which is something similar which we did in the uh, last class. Okay. So we will have so we will have two pi outside the bracket, okay. And then here we will actually have nothing but R one, R two, C one. So that's our resonant frequency. Okay. So uh, when we do this, we are going to get uh, these results. Okay, and these are the things that we are actually going to derive. Okay, and these are quite long derivations. So I don't know if we can do it today. Okay. So what happens is, uh, uh, if if we consider that uh, this is actually connected to the non-inverting terminal. Okay, one more thing since Connected okay, to the okay, non-inverting terminal, non-inverting terminal. Okay, and you know, uh, if we just look into the diagram, okay, if we just look into the diagram, what is connected to the non-inverting terminal? Okay, so. You see this. The non-inverting terminal has got two tasks. Okay, so if that is the case, okay, I will just give you this food for thought. Uh, but then uh, uh, you can understand this. The gain so gain means a, right? So gain of of an okay, a is equal to one plus R four divided by R three. Okay. That will be the gain actually. Okay, and we are going to see that using this relation, we can actually find out the value to be three. Okay, and so on. Okay, and let me just take one condition which we actually want to understand here. Okay, before we actually proceed with this, we can actually understand certain conditions. But before that, maybe um, I can just take a take the circuit in the next page. Okay, just copy this. Okay. So if we just do this, okay, this part, if you understand it, and let me just write down few points here. Okay, so let's say I will assume something here. Okay, I'll assume certain values which are there for the circuit. So let's assume before we analyze the circuit and find out those resonant frequencies, we can say this. Okay, try this condition. So what we assume is R1 and R2 are equal. Okay, so you know R1 and R2, this and this are actually equal. Okay. And uh, C1 and C2 are also equal. So both the circuits will actually have uh, a similar behavior, okay? But only one will be parallel and one will be in C1. C1 is equal to. C2, okay? And let's say we have got a frequency 
this is actually passing through the system which is let's say 10 kilohertz okay we have got 10 kilohertz frequency okay one more thing we should know is what is the value of the capacitor so capacitor let's say 0 0.01 microfarad so this actually may form a part of our numerical question also okay? now let's find out what is r okay? since we know c can we find out r the answer is yes okay because you know i said that uh, the frequency would be actually nothing but 1 divided by 2 pi r c okay? and let's say this is the resonant frequency okay so what will be r r would be nothing but 1 divided by 2 pi f c so that means we are deciding what can be the value of r in any circuit deciding the value of r is important because capacitance is something which you can manage okay you can actually tune it but once you make the circuit the resistor will have to have a fixed value so for this kind of value what is the value of uh, resistor or uh, r that we can actually have so it will be 2 into 3.14 okay into 10 to the power 4 okay kilohertz i'll just convert it to hertz okay into then this is nothing but uh, c okay c is microfarad so 10 to the power minus 6 so 0 0.01 two places more so it is 10 to the power 8 okay minus each other so if you just do this calculation okay i'm not asking you to do the calculation but you need to do this probably if i'm asking you in some 1.59 kilo okay you just check it once i hope it is correct okay so this is the value of r that you should actually have okay and that's quite obvious with the calculation and uh, let's say i will assume one more thing let's assume okay r4 now i know what is uh, c1 and c2 we have given a predefined value we have found out what is r1 and r2 okay the only two values of uh, that we need is now is r4 and r3 okay so let's say i have fixed the value of r4 okay at 20 kilo ohm if I fix the value of R4 at 20 kilo ohm, the value of R3 must be 10 kilo ohm. Okay. Now, why do I say must be? We will understand now. So, we have these values. This is C1 is equal to 0 0.01 microfarad, which is equal to C2. The same problem. Okay. And then R1 is equal to 1.59 kilo ohm which is equal to r2 so we have fixed these values okay so what happens is now if we are actually using a circuit we actually have a working circuit uh, what we can do is we can uh, use a potentiometer okay we can actually sometimes use a potentiometer and we need can fix the value okay so what is this uh, this is r2 and this is r1 right this r2 and r1 we can actually tune it okay uh, because you know this potentiometer actually can tune a circuit uh, resistance but not much okay we need to have some value which is very close to this and tune r1 is equal to r2 is equal to 1.5 okay so once we tune this then accordingly we can select r3 and r4 now i said that r3 is 10 kilo ohm and r4 must be 2 kilo 20 kilo ohm. okay the so why it's that okay you can just go to this previous section and try to understand this okay you see a must be equal to 3 okay a must be equal to 3 and also if we see this a is equal to 1 plus r4 by r3 okay so if you look here a is equal to 1 plus r4 plus r3 and a must be equal to 3 that means this this part okay, this part r4 by r3 must be equal to 2 so their ratio should be something which is fixed so if you look here r4 it is uh, 20 okay kilo ohm or ohm doesn't matter both are got same unit and this R3 is 10. So this will actually give you 10. Okay? And that's why this value of R4 and R3 is not something which we can actually take in random. Okay? We have to actually fix the values. That's very important. Okay? So uh, why uh, we have uh, written these values and try to understand it? Because you know uh, we can actually fix the values and actually use this uh, device okay? 
and get the frequency selector circuit working. So hence we can select okay, R3 and R4 okay, and adjust. So R3 and R4 is something which we are not going to change much but R1 and R2 we can actually adjust okay, according to using the potentiometer and adjust R1 and R2 okay, to design a wind rate oscillator of desired frequency. Let's say you desire certain frequency or you know that this is going to be the input frequency that you actually want to amplify. Okay, if you want uh, the signal to come out of that, this particular frequency. What frequency? Let's say for this example, we can actually take up to 10 kilohertz. So if I want this 10 kilohertz actually to get amplified as a signal, I need to set the value of R1, R2, R3, R4, C1, and C2. Okay. So uh, approximately you can take up C1 and C2, do some trial and error and set the value. And based on that, you can actually find out what is the value of R that you need. So you know, having a resistor of around uh, approximately 1.5 kilo is quite common, and capacitors are always used in a microfarad range, mostly okay, in these kind of things. You can take this, you can take this resistor, and accordingly you can see what is the value of R2 and R4. Do it, connect it in the circuit, and you'll see that that particular signal will actually get uh, amplified. Okay, so uh, that is how basically the selection is made. Okay. Mm -hmm.